Hey everyone, Britt Albert here. If this is your first time here, I'm a spiritual transformational life coach. It's my goal for this channel to help you overcome the obstacles that are standing in the way of you living your best and most authentic life. In this video, we're continuing on with the Conversations with God series. If this is your first time with the Conversations with God series, don't fret. This video will still make sense, but I do highly encourage you to go back and rewatch. I have a whole playlist, which I'll put up above. Rewatch the previous videos so that way you have a good idea about what's going on within this series. One of the things that I do is I will play actual clips from the audiobook. And the reason that I do that is because I want it to speak to you. I want it to resonate within you and for you to grasp what it is that you need to receive out of this. At the end of the video, I give my own commentary and my own thoughts, but I want to stress that they are my commentary and my thoughts. If they don't resonate with you, there's nothing wrong with that. That is why I put the actual audio from the audiobook in this series. So without further delay, conversations with God. Could we just could we just stop here for a minute and let me catch my breath? Did I hear you say there are no shoulds or shouldn'ts in God's world? That is correct. How can that be? If there are none in your world, where would they be? Indeed, where? I repeat the question. Where else would shoulds and shouldn'ts appear if not in your world? In your imagination. But those who have taught me all about the rights and wrongs, the do's and don'ts, the shoulds and shouldn'ts, told me all those rules were laid down by you, by God. And those who taught you were wrong. I have never set down a right or wrong, a do or a don't. To do so would be to strip you completely of your greatest gift, the opportunity to do as you please and experience the results of that. The chance to create yourself anew in the image and likeness of who you really are. The space to produce a reality of a higher and higher you based on your grandest idea of what it is of which you are capable. To say that something, a thought, a word, an action is wrong would be as much as to tell you not to do it. To tell you not to do it would be to prohibit you. To prohibit you would be to restrict you. To restrict you would be to deny the reality of who you really are as well as the opportunity for you to create and experience that truth. There are those who say that I have given you free will, yet these same people claim that if you do not obey me, I will send you to hell. What kind of free will is that? Does this not make a mockery of God? To say nothing of any sort of true relationship between us? Well, now we're getting into another area I wanted to discuss, and that's this whole business about heaven and hell. From what I'm gathering here, there's no such thing as hell. There is hell, but it is not what you think. And you do not experience it for the reasons you've been given. What is hell? It is the experience of the worst possible outcome of your choices, decisions, and creations. It is the natural consequence of any thought which denies me or says no to who you are in relationship to me. It is the pain you suffer through wrong thinking, Yet even the term wrong thinking is a misnomer, because there is no such thing as that which is wrong. Hell is the opposite of joy. It is unfulfillment. It is knowing who and what you are and failing to experience that. It is being less. That is hell. And there is none greater for your soul. But hell does not exist as this place you have fantasized, where you burn in some everlasting fire, exist in some state of everlasting torment. What, what, what purpose could I have in that? Even if I did hold the extraordinarily ungodly thought that you did not deserve heaven, why would I have a need to seek some kind of revenge or punishment for your failing? Wouldn't it be a simple matter for me to just dispose of you? What vengeful part of me would require that I subject you to eternal suffering of a type and at a level beyond description? If you answer, the need for justice, would not a simple denial of communion with me in heaven serve the ends of justice? Is the unending infliction of pain also required? I tell you, there is no such experience after death as you have constructed in your fear-based theologies. Yet there is an experience of the soul so unhappy, so incomplete, so less than whole, so separated from God's greatest joy, that to your soul this would be hell. But I tell you, I do not send you there, nor do I cause this experience to be visited upon you. You yourself create the experience, whenever and however you separate yourself from your own highest thought about you. 
You yourself create the experience. Whenever you deny yourself, whenever you reject who and what you really are. Yet even this experience is never eternal. It cannot be, for it is not my plan that you shall be separated from me forever and ever. Indeed, such a thing is an impossibility. For to achieve such an event, not only would you have to deny who you are, I would have to as well. This I will never do. And so long as one of us holds the truth about you, the truth about you shall ultimately prevail. But if there is no hell, does that mean that I can do what, what I want, act as I wish, commit any act, without fear of retribution? Is it fear that you need in order to be, do, and have what is intrinsically right? Must you be threatened in order to be good? What is being good? Who gets to have the final say about that? Who sets the guidelines? Who makes the rules? I tell you this, you are your own rule maker. You set the guidelines. And you decide how well you have done, how well you are doing. For you are the one who has decided who and what you really are, and who you want to be. And you are the only one who can assess how well you're doing. No one else would judge you ever for why and how could God judge God's own creation and call it bad. If I wanted you to be and do everything perfectly, I would have left you in the state of total perfection whence you came. The whole point of the process was for you to discover yourself, create yourself as you truly are, and as you truly wish to be. Yet you could not be that unless you also had a choice to be something else. Should I therefore punish you for making a choice that I myself have laid before you? <laughs> if I did not want you to make the second choice, why would I create other than the first? This is a question you must ask yourself before you would assign me the role of a condemning God. The direct answer to your question is, yes, you may do as you wish without fear of retribution. It may serve you, however, to be aware of consequences. Consequences are results, natural outcomes. These are not at all the same as retributions or punishments. Outcomes are simply that. They are what results from the natural application of natural laws. They are that which occurs quite predictably as a consequence of what has occurred. All physical life functions in accordance with natural laws. Once you remember these laws and apply them, you have mastered life at the physical level. What seems like punishment to you, or what you would call evil or bad luck, is nothing more than a natural law asserting itself. Then if I were to know these laws and obey them, I would never have a moment's trouble again. Is that what you're telling me? You would never experience yourself as being in what you call trouble. You would not understand any life situation to be a problem. You would not encounter any circumstance with trepidation. You would put an end to all worry, doubt, and fear. You would live as you fantasize Adam and Eve lived, not as disembodied spirits in the realm of the absolute, but as embodied spirits in the realm of the relative. Yet you would have all the freedom, all the joy, all the peace, and all the wisdom, understanding, and power of the spirit you are. You would be... A fully realized being. This is the goal of your soul. This is its purpose, to fully realize itself while in the body, to become the embodiment of all that it really is. This is my plan for you. This is my ideal, that I should become realized through you. That thus, concept is turned into experience, that I might know myself experientially. Wow. Let's take a moment to just breathe in that information. Before we go into my thoughts on it, I want this to really sit with you. See how it feels. Does this feel right? And if it doesn't feel right, I want you to ask yourself, does it not feel right because it's coming from a place of love or a place of fear? Sit with this for just one moment longer. This was such a powerful video. This is one of the key things within this book that really excited me when I first heard it. 
because it was a truth that I already knew to exist within myself. But it is very much against religious dogma. And that is the understanding that what does it serve? What does it serve us or God to punish us in eternal damnation? But one of the things that God said is that hell is real. It's just not what we think it is. It's a state of being in which we put ourself. It's the state of suffering. And I can tell you, I've been to hell. I've been through hell and so have you. Denying who I was for so many years, living in fear of persecution, of rejection, of people telling me that I'm lying or that I'm crazy or whatever, those things kept me, those fears kept me from being my most authentic self and being able to reach out and talk to you and bring you a video like this or bring my practice to the clients that work with me. When I was not acknowledging the coach within me and who I was, not acknowledging my spiritual gifts and seeing them as evil or seeing them as less than godly. I saw them as a curse rather than a gift. I saw them as something to be feared. I was afraid to open up to them because I was told that that is evil, that I would be opening myself up to and susceptible to evils that were unimaginable. I lived in constant fear, but that fear ate at who I was and I became an angry person. I was stuck in victim mode, which held me hostage. I was unable to come to you, to come within myself and to say, this is who I am and I'm gonna help people. To say, this is who I am and I am from God. I am not an abomination. I am not evil. I am not bad. But when I believed those things about myself, that was hell. Real, true hell, a denial of myself, a denial of God and a separation. How many times have you been in hell in your life? And are you still there? Comment below and let's lift each other up help each other with our stories of escaping hell, finding ourselves, finding our voice, finding our truth. And if you're stuck as a community, let's come together and raise each other up and be there for each other and remind each other the power, the value, the love of who we are and how God sees us. If this video is beneficial to you or you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if there's somebody that needs to hear this message, share this message with them and help us to continue to grow this community. I love you guys so much and I hope you're enjoying this series. I'll see you next time.